Well, hello and welcome to the 36th Independent Film Fest Osnabrück and welcome to our sort of virtual Q&A space, which didn't only allow us to connect with filmmakers during the travel restrictions last year, but also allows us now to connect internationally. And uh, today I'm really um, excited to have uh, Yuli Harbasse here, the director of The Thing Cloud. And Yuli, thanks so much for meeting with me today and talk a little bit about your film. And it almost seems fitting that we meet virtually seeing as yeah. <laughs> uh, the pink cloud is all about um, isolation and um, I will try not to draw too many comparisons to the pandemic we all have been facing for so long but it sort of is the elephant in the room um, when it comes <laughs> to your film so you yeah. must have had this weird moment of realization that when you um, put on paper in 2017 um, what became reality like three years later um, Did it help you in any way that you had imagined a world in isolation for so long that um, you and your film crew maybe had a different reaction at the beginning of lockdown or did it feel less new to you? So uh, in the beginning, but right in the beginning, like the first few weeks, me and the actors, we were like, oh, we did like a rehearsal for this already. Like we know how it is, it's, it's fine. But of course, when we realized it wouldn't last just two months, it would last maybe one year, maybe more than one year, then I think we were angels like everyone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> maybe let's address that set elephant in the room um, and talk about the cloud itself. So in contrast to coronavirus, which has been studied intensely, the cloud in the film remains sort of this vague thing that nobody really knows what it is we know its color and we know the fact that it looks like a cloud but everything else is really specified and yet it holds so much power over humanity um how did you come up with the idea of a toxic cloud and how did you decide to leave all those scientific questions um unanswered yeah so i wanted to do a film about a, about a couple that just met but then suddenly had to stay together for a long time And when I was thinking about reasons for it, I didn't want it to be something very realistic, like, oh, they can't leave the house because there is a war in the city or because of something, I don't know, physical that is locking the, the space. Or So one reference was the Exterminating Angel by Bunuel, because in the film, in, in Exterminating Angel, you don't even have anything outside. You just can't leave and they just say they can leave and you just have to believe. So mm. it's, uh, for me, it's like I wanted something like this. I wanted something that wasn't realistic, that you had to just, okay, there is this cloud and it kills you in 10 seconds and we don't know what it's made of, how it appeared. We don't know well, when it's uh, disappearing. So that was what i liked about it and i don't know how the pink cloud came to me in my city where we shot we have a lot of pink sunsets we have mm -hmm. beautiful sunsets so maybe pink clouds were in my head but uh, i wanted it to be surreal and and not to get deep in the scientific aspect like the sci-fi that i like are focus it more on characters and emotions and less on the you know explaining the scientific aspect of anything mm. yeah it becomes really clear right at the beginning sort of that the cloud is simply a metaphor and um, this is maybe also where my interpretation comes in but I felt like it represents um, sometimes the social norms like um, when you meet someone you move in together you start a family and um, in, in the movie, you have on the one hand, Iago, who is pretty content with all these steps and has this optimistic side. And then you have Giovanna, who raises critical questions and is simply um, questioning and unsure. Um, do you think um, maybe you could talk a little bit more about the difference in those characters and in what ways maybe Iago has it easier maybe to deal with a situation mm -hmm. than Giovanna? Yeah, I think you are right in your interpretations, like the pink cloud is like what society is expect of that woman, you know, like you're going to stay in this apartment and you're going to stay with this man and you stop, you know, being single and partying and <laughs> and you will build a family, you don't want it, but you're, you will follow the steps that uh, society thinks traditional women should follow. So 
And for Iago, uh, the situation is much easier, you know, because the film is, for me is a lot about what freedom and happiness mis means to different people. Uh, what makes him happy doesn't make her happy. Uh, we have different notions of what we want in life, different objectives. So for Giovanna, that was not the life she wanted. And for Iago, she thinks is he thinks it's not that bad. It's like he wanted a child, he has a child. Um, he lives in a comfortable apartment. Uh, he doesn't work anymore, but it doesn't seem to bother him like uh, stop uh, working. So it's this, these different expectations that we have in life that makes their journey so different, even though they are in the same apartment. And it's maybe it's because it's so relatable because we all, um, I was shocked <laughs> at how much I could identify at some points with what, you know, they were doing day in and day out. And I didn't want to have to identify, but still uh, there yeah. we were. Um, and also, Another reaction we see is um, from uh, Giovanna's friend who suffers like under the suffocating loneliness um, because she is all mm. by herself and um, her and um, other people, they try to keep in touch uh, with their friends and relatives um, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So technology also plays an important role um, mm -hmm. in there. So mm -hmm. what was your approach with including technology in uh, the film? Was it something that you welcomed and treated positively or more with skepticism yeah so for me it was funny like when I had because in the film they have the birthday party by uh, by cell phones and computers and for me oh that was a scene it was so creative it was so you know different <laughs> and then and then I was in one after, you know, and that those kind of things. In the, when the pandemic started, I was you know, crazy with the situation. Like, I can't believe, like, now everything will turn into reality. It won't be a sci-fi anymore. Uh, but yes, I had these moments when I repeated the scenes from my film, and that was very strange. But I feel that even now, it's it's good that we have technology, like, one of my best friends moved to Australia like six years ago. So it's our only, of course, we meet like once a year, but it's mm. not enough. So it's good, you know, when we meet in person, it's like we are, we have the updates about each other's lives, but it's not the same. Uh, more and with, with more people, you know, when I talk with three friends online, it's not the same as talking in, as chatting in a bar, you know, it's less spontaneous is it's not the same and uh, technology is very important in the pink cloud and in our <laughs> pandemic mm -hmm. uh but it, it it's not like i feel i feel that if you are feeling uh you know if you are in a bad day and you want to hug someone you, you want your to talk to your friend or your sister like giovanna does it's you know you want connection you want to, to touch <laughs> someone to to give them hugs so it's not the same and for sarah the friend of Giovanna, she's completely alone. So for her, it's it's very difficult, the situation. Uh, because I think if I had to be with Iago or alone, mm. I would prefer to be with Iago. <laughs> <laughs> because alone in the pink cloud, as she says, like she says, you don't know what it is to be alone in the pink cloud. Like it's very yeah. difficult. Yeah, that's true. And, and I mean, they do have some space to not have to be in the same exact room at the yeah. same time. So um, this is also something I wanted to talk with you about um, because the location is so central um, to the film. So they're, well, forcibly shared apartment. Um, what was important to you in choosing and designing the setting that they were gonna, and the film was gonna be spending most of the time in? Yeah. So for me, it was very important that it had two floors because, because so they could do the divorce <laughs> period. <laughs> uh, and for the windows to be big, so we could see the clouds, you know, uh, in an a open landscape. Because one of the rules of that I put uh, for us for the shooting was that the camera didn't leave uh, the apartment. So uh, when we see the cloud, we see through the windows. When we see the mm -hmm. other, uh characters you know their friends we see through the screen so it's like i wanted to have their point of view and i wanted to suddenly the cloud is in the street or in another apartment and to to bring the um, the suffocating aspect of of the pink cloud so it was very important and also 
I wanted the apartment to be big and comfortable so I could focus on other things, you know. Uh, the problems they have with each other is not because they are in the kitchen and they keep bumping into another or mm. that they don't have a space of they don't have comfort of they don't have food or water or something like that. So um, I wanted to be to, to them to be comfortable um, for that. And also because Iago is, is happy, you know, I think if they were in a studio in Paris with 15 square meters, uh, even Iago, he wouldn't be happy. He would be getting crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the pink thought seems like it's always there because there are so many windows, like the outside versus inside is yeah. um, flowing into one sometimes almost. Mm -hmm. um, and then also um, the time in the film is really interesting because it passes almost without us realizing because we stay in the same location and then suddenly mm -hmm. there's this point of realization where you are like okay this is going to take years and then you see the kid growing up and so the whole movie is like meticulously um paced and um, were there specific steps in the timeline that you wanted to include in their isolation because it became more clear that the cloud was not going to be going mm -hmm. away or not going to be going addressed so we weren't waiting for you know science or a vaccine or something um so yeah. what were the steps of their relationship that you had in mind so in the it was like something that i discussed with vicente the editor because in the beginning time is messy in the film uh you know I, we're like should we put cards should we put something like because we have uh, we have a little some hints, you know. Wow, the food is gone. The the sister is complaining that the food is almost ending in her house, uh, and then the drones uh, uh, deliver food. But we have small hints, but it's not a lot. And then we have uh, in the television they sing uh, "Happy Birthday to the Cloud" when the cloud completes completes mm. one year. Uh, but I think you feel time really passing when the child arrives and when the child keeps growing. Uh, so we were discussing that in the beginning, Sh should we put, I don't know, some cards, some, some things that makes very clear when, uh, how time is passing. But then we were editing, uh, when the pandemic started, we already had like four cuts of the film, but then we could make the final cut during the editing and during the pandemic. And we didn't uh, change anything. But one thing that we realized is that time was messy for everyone. You know, everybody was saying, I don't know if today is Monday or Saturday or Wednesday. Like, has it been one week or has it been one month? So it was crazy for everyone. So like, let's yeah. just Put, put that in the film you know it's, it's very messy in the beginning but it's the pandemic is like that if you don't leave the house you don't know what which day it is if you don't have to if you can work in your pajamas you don't know what day it is so yeah uh, you don't really you don't notice it, it like <laughs> <laughs> yeah also um what you um just said that you know there are um like those government reactions uh where the food, you know, um, is running out. And so they provide these tubes that are attached to um, the houses. And this is maybe something where um, I want to also ask you um, it, what the well, comparison is to, to the pandemic now. And if you um, mm -hmm. maybe even well thought about the government reaction in the film a little and, uh, or was it oh, something yeah. just like a side fact? I don't know if that yeah, question was <laughs> yeah, no. formulated. So you always say that the most surrealistic film thing on the film is not the cloud, is how the government is so efficient in Brazil, you know. <laughs> that is the most surrealistic thing on the film because after, I don't know, one month, two months, I think after one month and, and some days, they, they install this, these things on the window to, to give food uh, for us and our government with the pandemic, like he kept uh, denying to buy Pfizer, you know, they, they, he kept saying it was just a small flu. He was in total denial and people were dying and he was, he continued to denial. 
everything. So it was terrible. The managing of the pandemic, I think it was one of the worst in the whole world. And we suffered from them. We had many, many people uh, who died. So yes, the, for sure the, the government in the film is not the government that we have right now. And uh, during the shooting, one uh, person for the crew, he, wa he was watching a scene and he said, Yuli, is the thing called Bolsonaro? And I said, <laughs> if, if for you it is, then it is, you know, every person uh, can, can do their own meaning for the cloud. But in, in a way that it's torturing and it's terrible for you, then it has some some related things with our yeah. president. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Hopefully you can all uh, break out of our bubbles a little bit more uh, this year and the coming months. And um, I hope that you can show the film many times and uh, hear lots of <laughs> well human mm -hmm. connective uh, reactions to it. Um, Thank you, Yuli, for um, spending time with us today. And um, thank you so much for, for having me and to, to chat about the film. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much.